Hello RuneScape fans, welcome to this week's edition of this game. I don't know. <laughs> let's let's get on some fun. Right, so we just we said last week we were going to cover melee combat in this week's video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get back to a bank that I enjoy being at. I will finish leveling this. I'm actually going to be taking a break for the rest of the day from this game. I've been going hard on it for like 27 hours the last four days or three, two days and today. And I just, I need a mental break from it. It's double XP weekend and it's going to suck to give up on it. Or not, not so much give up on it, but stop playing it for the rest of the duration. But there's only so much I can do in a given day without going mentally insane. So let's cover our melee combat skills, which is attack, strength, defense and constitution now as i i wrote out this long script that i completely threw out the window at the last moment because why why write a script when you can just do stuff on the fly and be like oh i forgot this and oh i forgot that what about this it's besides the point so basically how this breaks down and we will actually bring up our attack because this is going to be the first thing we cover we are going to just use uh Yes, this is the best way to go about it. All right, so when when talking about combat, you start out level one, right? Level one means you get to use bronze weaponry, right? That also means you get to equip. Uh, whoops, defense, uh, melee armors, bronze weaponry, right? And with this means that you get to attack stuff. Now there's two ways of doing combat in RuneScape or RuneScape 3, however you want to refer to it. One is the basically the standard way of the new way of doing things, which is this uh, revolution mode, right? So it allows you to let it auto do things. You could turn revolution off and do it manually. So you could choose what abilities you use when you use them, obviously. It, it varies from weapon to weapon what you want to use and how you want to use it. Some abilities will require them to be a blade and not a hammer, or be a slash instead of a crush, in a sense. Now, the other way that you can go about this, there is legacy combat mode, right? Which simplifies all this to where it's just a straight attack, and that's it and then you can get the threshold abilities like overpower and things like that the reason i don't like this is because i like the ability to sit somewhere without having to take a ton of food with me so because i use the new interface i get this lovely thing where is it here it is regenerate where you regenerate two percent of your maximum health uh, every 0.6 seconds at the cost of 10% adrenaline, which your adrenaline bar goes up to 100, so you get, basically it takes 10 away every time, so you get 20% of your life back. So essentially, if you're fighting stuff that's like your level, slightly above your level, or slightly lower than your level, you can sit there infinitely without having to have a inventory full of food to constantly eat and there's some things while doing slayer which is something i'll cover later in another video while doing things like that you'll fight monsters that are higher level and require you to actively eat food so like when i had to go out and kill 70 lesser demons i did have to take food with me when i went down there to kill them because they do magic damage and uh they're weaker to range damage which is something else i'll get into in here as well uh, I'm actually going to cover quite a bit different things in this video. It's not going to just un undoubtedly be melee, but generally you can go to legacy combat mode, which makes things a little easier, but not by much. It's just less micromanaging, but there's not a whole lot to micromanage when you have things set up in a specific way. Now, I use this mode because again, I like the regeneration. I like that. So you can go back. So now, now that you know the two different ways, which is the legacy combat mode and the new combat mode, which I have to look over my screen to see where my camera kind of stops filming my hands. There is combat EXP. When you default start in the game, all three of these boxes are checked. And all, all these boxes here are checked, except for this one. This one, I don't even know what this does. Uh... 
Block PvP XP, XP will no longer be granted from player versus player combat. Mm. I guess if you're trying to set a specific level, that makes sense. I don't, I don't know why you'd use this, but I don't do player versus player. I'm not a guy that does player versus player. If you want anything on player versus player, you're gonna have to check someone else's YouTube channel or guide or something of the sort. Because I don't mess with PvP. I don't, I, I don't play RuneScape for player versus player combat. Which, when I cover Slayer, me and you, RuneScape, are gonna have a talk. That's when I cover Slayer. That's not gonna be today. So. By default, these are all checked. Now, personally, I recommend having these three level up on their on their own all the way to about level 20. You could probably not do that and just do one specifically from level 1. Like, if you want to be a pure player, which this is something I've heard of, I've never done, you just do attack. You don't worry about strength and defense at all. Or you do attack and strength, no defense, and you just walk around in bronze armor with a two-handed weapon. I don't know. Never done it, not messing with it. I level up everything. Obviously, you can see that here. My strength is down because I only, it's double HP week and I was focused on donation. Another thing altogether. But, essentially, I, I leveled my combat, all three of these, equally to level 20. So I could get to Mithril. Is it Mithril? No. Mithril's not at level 20 now. Uh, what is that 20 now? Steel? Steel. Once I got to steel, I started leveling things individually. I would level attack up 10 levels to get the new weapon, then defense, then strength. So basically it goes sign and side. So at level one, you get bronze. At level 10, you get iron weaponry. At level 20, you get steel. At level 30, you get mithril. At level 40, you get adamite. At level 50, you get rune. At level 60, you get dragon. And I can't pronounce that, but yes. You get dragon weaponry and oh, what is it called? Orca, orca, orc, orculum, orculum, oricalum. I can't pronounce that. I'm not gonna sit here for 20 minutes trying. But you get that at level, uh, you know, 60. At 70, you start getting like the uh, necromium weaponry, the barrows weaponry, barrows weaponry the abyssal whip which i have one of these and i can't wait to use it because i love whipping things to death and so on and so forth now of course you as a free-to-play player if you're playing this free-to-play 50 is going to be your last weapon upgrade because you, well i guess you can get corrupted dragon weaponry i've not heard of this or seen this but you can get that and afterwards oh there's arcanite weaponry in oh that's for dungeoneering so that doesn't matter but basically, once you get to level 50, that's it until you become a member. Same thing with defense, codes and sides. After level 50, you're kind of just SOL on... Why is it doing this? Melee armors. There we go. After level 50, you, you get that corrupted dragon armor, which again, don't know how to get that or what it does. But then you're pretty much done for. There's nothing else you can use. Everything else is members from that point up. So... Once you get to about level 50, there's not really a point to focus really hard on it unless you want to keep doing that with other skills. Strength, obviously, there's always a reason because the higher strength, the more damage you do. Attack is basically accuracy and what you can equip. Strength is how much damage you can do, which really doesn't matter. I mean, it's all weapon-based. Um, I'm going to say having 10 points more in this than this is not really going to make a difference, to be honest. I don't, not that I've noticed yet. Again, I'm not reading guides or anything else of the sort. Um, the only guides I read are for quests, but I'm doing this all on my own from that side. I do read guides on divination because it's a new skill and I have no idea what to do with it, but yeah, I'm getting there. So basically what you want to do with your combat is level your attack, level your defense, bring strength up afterwards. That's how I personally do it. You can leave the all three on at once. Like you can level attack, strength, defense the same. The experience is the same either way. There is not one way that's better than the other. If you level all three of them at the same time together, you will still level the same. You'll still have to kill the same amount of monsters to get from 50 to 51 for each skill, or if you do all three of them at once, it'd be the same amount of monsters. So basically, if you level one skill, let's say it takes 100 monsters to level attack from, from one level to the next, right? 100 monsters you have to kill. 
if you added, if you look at across to the same board, it, 100 here, 100 here, 100 here, it's the same thing. It's 300 monsters either way you go. So it doesn't matter which way you do it. Like, my personal opinion, it does go faster if you do it singly because, like, let's say you're doing 50 to 60, right? Once you get to 60 and you get that new weapon, the other ones go faster because you're killing things faster because you're hitting them harder and it's just going faster. That's where I kind of lay, think that like after level 20, you want to divide it up and do 10 levels and something before you do 10 levels and something else, because it will go faster because you're equipping a higher damaging weapon. You'll survive more with a higher, higher armor value. So strength becomes like the fastest thing to level. Constitution levels up as, as its own. It can level up from ranged and magic as well. So these all tie in together, but that's a different story basically. If you're not focusing on magic or range, these all kind of stay like around the same level once you get there. Like this will be inside with this. Mine's only higher because of ranged and magic, so not that big of a deal. Now, in those different things, my recommendation, and this will follow true to everything that you do, when you want to level up, I don't know why my character's like skipping across the screen right now. The K, two steps, one, two, stop, one, two, stop, one, two, stop. I think, is it in here? Uh, is it in here? This one? It's been so long since I've been here. And it's not. I knew it! So, you want to go to this cave for attack, ranged, or magic from level one to level 30 I want to say because it's one of the fastest places to level it doesn't matter at the end of the day you can decide not to literally come right over here and slaughter this entire room they take one hit to die with any weapon it doesn't matter what weapon you're using or what spell you're using or what bow you're using one hit everything in here and it's fast experience, and there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and they give I think forty experience, thirty to it'd be ten to each, each thing. So it's like ten to each, right? So experience would be ten, 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 ten. It, it'll level fast. It goes quick when you do range of magic, since it only divides up here. It's thirty and ten, thirty and ten. It goes really fast, and it's it's really quick. That's the only thing I'm gonna tell you that you should do. As a guide reference from that point on from level 30 forward go slaughter anything you want you see something that drops a lot of, of a lot of stuff that sells for a lot in the the grand exchange do that you want to go farm up some like leather or hides or something of the sort go do that don't don't worry about what's the fastest way to level to 99 you'll get there eventually anyway like Rushing to one thing is going to burn you out quickly, which is what has happened to me with Divination right now. I took this from level 29, 30 to 68, and, and it took, you know, 17 hours. It burns you out when that's all you do. So play around with it. Have fun with it. I've been leveling my combat skills while doing Slayer. That's pretty fun. It's like, hey, go kill 50 of those things. Okay. Hey, what are they weak against? Oh, wind spells? Great. Grab my staff. Grab my gear, run over there, and start casting wind spells at them. That's my advice in that sense. Other than that, if you guys have any questions about what I'm re referring to in the guide, or not the guide, but like the, the video that I make about these things, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or advice, I'm open to advice. So long as you like, don't come to me on my channel and be like, hey, you should be following this to the T. I don't give a damn. I don't. I don't want to follow a guide to the T to, to burn myself out. I want to play the game how I want to play it. Um, I do recommend the, from 1 to 30 doing everything in that room because it goes fast. And the first 30 levels really don't matter. Afterwards, when you get up to the point of like trying to focus on something and do something, set small goals. And I mean relatively small goals. Don't be like, oh, I have to get this from 1 to 80 today. Don't set that. Don't don't put that expectation in your mind. 
Like, that expectation will burn you out and make you not want to do things. Be like, alright, you know what? I'm level 60. I need to get to 62 this weekend. And then pace it out as you want. Grab a drink. Grab some popcorn. Put on your favorite anime. Talk to your girlfriend. Talk to your cats or dogs. Call up your buddy and be like, yeah, man, I'm just sitting here doing some combat, having some fun. How are you doing? How's the wife? How's the kid? Have fun with it, man. Relax. Chill. This person is really pink. Oh, she's gone. I was going to say, that person was really pink. It looked pretty cool, but it's really pink. <laughs> but that's about it for this video. It is shorter than last video, which I'm going to, again, I want to try and make my videos down to about 10 minutes. This one was slightly longer because I was covering four things in it instead of one. But the rest of the videos going forward should only be about 10 minutes. Because uh, I think next week I am going to cover... We're going to finish combat out in the sense first. So we're going to probably do ranged next week. And then prayer. Probably do ranged and prayer next week because they're both short. They're very simplistic to go over. Might even cover magic. So we might cover these three and it might be the last 15 minute video I have or so. And then from there, we'll break down each individual skill as we go. We'll probably try and do free to play before we do members, but we'll see. We'll get there. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Have a great one, and uh, don't lose your inventory. <laughs>